<laughs> Talking of unlikely encounters, because this was all in the papers, because uh, your your little oh no, mate, come on. Well, just because what we read in the I papers, got, I got cut up. Yeah, I got cut up. So this yeah. was the was it? Do you think rugged, right? I <laughs> see that. I can't wait to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> so was it Beatrice or Eugene? Wait, I can't talk about it. Oh, can you not talk about it? No. Oh, no, OK, sorry, no. I'll shut up. Was it a no. hat accident? It was, it, was James Blunt. it was James Blunt trying to get his pop career back. <laughs> he tried to kill you. <laughs> How did it end up in the papers? I don't know. There wasn't a lot of people there that night. Wait, I have no idea. Yeah, I'm I really wasn't. You can't tell the story. I, I can't tell the story. You can say allegedly what happened. OK, allegedly, uh, <laughs> one of the princesses... Eugenia Beatrice. James Blunt. One of them. And James Blunt and Ed Sheeran were in a room presumably in a palace, and uh, <laughs> James Blunt allegedly wanted to be knighted. Is that a euphemism? And, uh, <laughs> and so one of the princesses found a handy sword to what? knight him. Did you not read this in the papers? Well, I, did, I didn't know James Blunt was involved. <laughs> About, up to that point, I... Anyway, there was a bit of sword play and Ed Sheeran got cut in the face. Is that right? No. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, know, do you know what? I, I, have, I have no idea how that story came out. I have no idea. Because, like, it was so tight. It was so, and, like, for, like, two weeks afterwards, I had this huge gash on my face and people would be like, oh, what happened? You'd be like, oh, I fell. <laughs> <laughs> and then suddenly it came out. That They're is... Alleged. <laughs> <laughs> I've read, Will, that you have uh, this amazing amount of music that you haven't released but tracks with extraordinary artists like Michael Jackson and Prince and people like that. Will you ever release those tracks? Uh, no, because, you know, especially artists like Michael Jackson, where working with Michael Jackson is his critique and his two cents. So, you know, without him guiding on completing it, it's not my right to, to do that. He was a friend, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. And what was the story that you brought Michael Jackson and Prince to? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you... You brought Michael Jackson and Prince together. Yeah, so one time we had a show in, um, in Vegas, and Michael Jackson called. Hey, what's well, Michael? <laughs> okay, man. Yeah, so I heard you guys are doing a show tonight. But yeah, we going at 9 o'clock. Oh, rats. I got to put the kids to sleep. So I was like, well, we, I'm performing with Prince later on at 12. So anyways, Michael came to see me rock with Prince. And... It was, a, it was a magnificent night to see. It was me, Chris Tucker, and then watching me, Chris Tucker, Michael Jackson, watching Prince rock on stage. Yeah. So to make a long story short, Prince steps off the stage and plays the bass in Michael Jackson's face. <laughs> rips the freaking bass in 10 different pieces. Da -da 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 -da. Make a longer story shorter, Michael Jackson leaves and goes home and says, leave me in the house for breakfast. So I go to his house for breakfast, knock on the door. <laughs> First words he says, why was Prince playing the bass in my face? Lights <laughs> <laughs> out like a power out. Oh! Oh! oh. 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 I could feel the mist every time we kiss. Just didn't know a downpour like this. Oh. There's a there's a flash food warning. <laughs> will it will rain in the morning? There'll be puddles in the bed. I don't want to get too much. Oh! Oh, wait. There'll be puddles. No, 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 wait. Let me finish. Let me finish. Our question to the off. Let's finish. The word was, there'll be puddles in the bed, the weatherman said. Yeah, but why were there puddles in the bed? Yeah, wait a minute. Was she an what older lady? What is that? Was she? Oh! <laughs> Uh, Girl, I've got, the, I've got the lyrics. Girl, the weatherman said, it's cloudy skies right there between your thighs. <laughs> I want it soaking wet all over the bed. <laughs> Did you sing these lyrics? He wrote them. Hey, man. <laughs> so now, uh, you would think, you would think that people would just see this beautiful garment on the, on the World Wide Web and you just admire it, kind of, it doesn't really look lovely, but of course they can't. They, they do compare it, as you said, to uh, this, to <laughs> omelette. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a new one. They, they, also, they also turned it into uh, a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> but perhaps most delicious of all, a Ginster's beef slice. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. 
Last time I was here, I did my Fresh Prince rap. Eight million YouTube hits was on that. I can see your face, you like, what has he left? Well, this time I brought my DJ, Jazzy Jeff. What's that, Jeff? Here we go, here we go. Yo, yo, yo. Now this is a story all about how my life got flipped turned upside down. I'd like to take a minute to sit right there. Tell you how it became the prince of a town called Bel Air. Hey, hey. West Philadelphia, born and raised. On the playground is where I spent most of my days. Well, this is sweet, right? So the fans, because the fans who go to do it, they then, of course, want to blog about it because they've had this amazing of experience. Course, of course. But when they blog about it, it's borderline confusing on whether they had a good time or not. <laughs> so uh, here are some of the blog things. So we were asked to go to the living room, sit down, not know how much I was sweating during that moment. I was like, the fuck is going to happen? <laughs> could not keep up, then all of a sudden she just pops up out of nowhere, she appeared out of thin air like David Copperfield, and we all died, like, for real. <laughs> Wait, there's more. This one. This one. So she said she'll be playing her album for us. Let me tell you the noise that came out of my mouth was not human. I legit, <laughs> I legit almost told Mama Swift to call me an ambulance, because I wasn't going to make it. <laughs> <laughs> I then, love them so much because they always talk about dying. Dying, yes, I died. They're like, rest in peace, me, RIP, me. <laughs> I died dead. Yeah. They did. We took a little break. We took a little break. And she was passing around Rice Krispie treats and cookies. And I was talking to her mom for a little. And then I walked back in and she was like, hey, babe, thanks for coming. Do you want a treat? And I was like, I would, but I think I'm dead. <laughs> This is brilliant. Mid-sentence, she stopped talking and pointed to Amanda and said, Amanda, I'm so glad you're here. Amanda died right there. <laughs> <laughs> this and, and finally, finally, uh, guys, just wait for the one she did with Imogen Heap, because damn, that one slayed everyone to heaven and back. While listening to the song, I literally had to plan my funeral arrangements, because I wasn't going to make it. 